Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about this beast right here, the HP ProLiant DL980 G7 and how to upgrade the memory in your system. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL980 G7. Uh, do us a favor and click the like button and smash that subscribe. Well, let's hop in and get started. Uh, for starters, this thing is a beast of a system. I mean, it's just, it's massive, it's heavy, it's so big that there's actually handles on the side. I don't know if the video will show it, we might have to do it when we show the siding. Well, there's literally handles on the side where you have to have multiple guys lifted up because it's, I mean, easily 100 plus pounds. Um, I mean, it's just, it's an incredibly powerful system. Um, because of that, there's a, a ton of parts that can go inside. For, for starters, there's eight eight CPU sockets. Uh, you rarely hear a server that has eight CPU sockets, but you have to have a massive one like this to do it. Uh, it takes Intel uh, E7 2800V1 or E7 4800V1 series CPUs, or a slightly lesser proc would be the uh, Intel Xeon 6500 or 7500 series CPUs. Uh, all those are an LGA 50, uh, 1567 socket, um, and there are eight CPU sockets. I mean, it just blows me away there's eight CPU sockets inside of here. Um, you can put in 128 DIMMs uh, it's spread out across 16 risers, and we'll pull them out here in a bit and show you a little bit about those. Um, you can max out this machine uh, at a total of four terabytes, um, and that's gonna be 128 by 32 gigabyte. Um, and you can only actually max out with four terabytes if you're using E7 processors. If you're using the 6500 or 7500 series CPUs, the max is actually only two terabytes using 128 by 16 gigabyte. So let's get into a little bit more about the speeds that you can use for this machine. Uh, the lowest you can go is uh, 1066. Um, the highest you can go is 1600. But if you do use 1600, it's actually going to clock down to 1333. So your choices are 1066, uh, 1333, or 1600. Um, as far as the uh, uh, different module sizes, we kind of touched about uh, the max, but if you wanted something a little bit lower, you can use 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, or 32 gigs. And again, to use the 32 gigs, you have to have the uh, E7 procs inside to do that. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about the machine, let's go ahead and open it up uh, and show you a little bit about the uh, the memory risers, how to properly configure it, how to uh, properly install your RAM, and how to actually pull these risers out. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. You really never want to be inside a system without um, ESD to protect it, otherwise you might potentially shock and could damage some parts. So I'm going to grab my gear and I'll be right back. Now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. Uh, we actually moved it down uh, to make it a little bit easier because this machine is uh, a little bit tough to work on, uh, at least while you're filming. Uh, for a lot of servers, you actually pop open the top, but since this machine takes 128 uh, dims, you need to be able to access it uh, from the front. So what you're going to want to do is there's a blue tab right here. You're going to push that tab. This latch is going to come out. You're going to pull the latch down and you're going to pull it out. You're going to hear it click right there. And right there, you can see I'm not supporting the weight. Um, once it hits this point, there's a blue release button on this side and all the way over here on this side. So what you're going to do is push the two release buttons thumbs actually and then it's going to come out so you see it just moved a little bit more at this point I'm supporting it um, so I'm going to pull it all the way out and I'm going to do it slowly because you know the weight kind of drops right there and then I'm going to put it on top right now um, I'm going to switch it around so I can show you a little bit better angle on how to um, to do all the the dim slots and uh, I'll move that right now all right, now we've got the expansion card to the side. You can see uh, a little bit more in detail what we have here. So there are four CPUs, there are eight risers. Uh, technically, there are two expansion cards. That's how you get to your eight CPUs and your 16 risers. Uh, one important thing to note that we kind of skipped over a little bit in the beginning is the fact that this machine only accepts ECC registered, also known as RDIM. Unfortunately, it does not accept load-reduced modules, also known as LR DIMMs, and it does not accept ECC unbuffered, also known as server U DIMMs. It strictly accepts ECC registered. That is it. I wanted to make sure that was very clear in case somebody was trying to figure out if they could use load-reduced. No, you cannot. Not until the 8th gen from HP can you actually start using load-reduced memory. Okay. Uh, so now that we're in, um, I want to point out uh, that, you know, as we said, there's eight risers for uh, the expansion card and 16 risers total. Each riser has eight DIMM slots. Uh, and the risers start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight. So let's go ahead and start with riser one. And we'll go ahead and load it up for you and show you how to load it up. You're gonna lift these two blue, blue tabs up and just lift straight up. You will notice 
right here is a blue tab. You're going to want to simply lift the blue tab up, and we're in. Just that easy. Okay. Uh, so as we said, there are eight DIMM slots for uh, each memory riser, and there are four memory channels for each riser, and there are two DIMMs per memory channel. Uh, this is actually very important um, when we're talking about uh, Gen 7 servers as a whole because some of the uh, the sister Gen, uh, Gen 7 servers uh, like say the uh, DL360 or the DL380 have three DIMMs per channel and they run into what's called the rank rule where they can actually only use two DIMMs per channel for quad rank uh, memory. With the DL380 Gen 7, because there's only two DIMMs per channel, it doesn't have to worry about the rank rule, which is nice, and you can just completely max it out with 128 32 gigs, of course, assuming that you have E7 processors, all right? So let me go ahead and show you how you're going to max it out. Uh, you're you're going to want to start, um, well, actually, let me, let me, before we max it out, let's talk about the guys that aren't maxing it out, okay? So let's say you were only putting in, uh, let's say, four DIMMs per riser, okay? you're going to want to make sure you put the DIMMs in each of the white DIMM slots that I just pushed out, and you're going to skip the four black DIMM slots. The reason to, uh, that you want to do this is to maximize your overall performance. Uh, if you were to just say, like, load all four right here, you don't have a proper balance uh, for your load across all the memory channels. You want to um, have them evenly spread out across each memory channel, and this way you will maximize your overall performance. Uh, but let's be honest, if you're using a Haas of a machine like the DL980G7, uh, really you want to max it out, and you really want four terabytes in here, um, and you want to load it completely up. I mean, that's my recommendation because whatever you're using this for, whatever application, uh, I'm sure it's a very intense one, and you're going to want uh, to get the, the most that you can out of it, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start loading it up, and I'll show you a few uh, key things to talk about here. Uh, so first things first, uh, every module has a key, also uh, known as a notch right here in the middle. Uh, this key is very important um, because it does a couple different things. It prevents users from, one, putting in the wrong modules. Uh, you couldn't put in a DDR4 module or a DDR2 module, uh, but it's also important because the, mod, uh, the key is not perfectly in the middle. So you might have to flip the module around uh, to make sure that you have it lined up properly because if you look uh, there is a notch right here um, on the dim slot itself and it actually switches sides okay so you could be in a good flow and then start over here and think that you're gonna uh, put it the same way but you actually need to flip it around so these are some key things to note um, another thing that I like to do also before I get started I like to put uh, push open all the tabs it just makes it a little bit easier so that I'm not fumbling around as I'm going um, and since I'm actually maxing this all the way out um, as opposed to starting at the beginning of the channels which is the proper way to configure it if you weren't maxing it out since I'm loading them all up doesn't matter I actually like to start where it's the snuggest which is right here against this heat shield um, you, to me it's a little bit easier to do this first than to do do it last because then I have a module and it's just kind of a little tight space. Little things that, you know, they're not killers by any means, but just makes it a little bit easier for you as you're going. Um, and everyone likes easy, right? So, okay, another thing to note, the module is in, right? It looks great. It's sitting in there. It, it, it's in, right? No, it's not in. Uh, you see the tab is still sticking out. It's still fumbling around over here, okay? So this is a very important thing that we, we run into a lot. Uh, customers think that they have fully uh, seated their module and they think that they have a bad DIM. Well, it's actually, it's not fully seated and that's what the problem is. So I always tell people to listen for this right here. Listen for this click, that little click right there. You're going to hear it on both sides. And now you can actually see the tab is pushed up compared to these right here and it's fully inserted. It's, a, it's snug and it's in, okay? This is really important because uh, you wouldn't believe how many times a day we have somebody contact us and they think that they have a bad dim and it is a completely 100% fine dim. We tell them to rotate their slots um, and they move the modules around. And really the reason we tell them to rotate the slots uh, is because we figure one of the modules is not seated properly and sure as heck they rotate them and then they say, I don't know what happened, but it seems to be working fine now. And it's, that's because you didn't have it fully seated. So just a simple note that uh, it's, a, it's a common problem. I've done it. Our techs have done it. We've all done it. it it's easy to do. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if you're an experienced technician or it's your first time upgrading a system. Uh, it's just an easy thing to do. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and finish loading this up.
And boom, just like that, you can finish a riser in easily under a minute. Uh, it's really not that hard to do. Um, I mean, seriously, it, it, we're done just like that. So uh, now I'll show you how to put it back in. Uh, you're going to want to make sure, sometimes this tab right here, when you're trying to close it, it kind of gets stuck. You can see it kind of doing it right now. You might need to lift it up a little bit just to make sure it gets over and then it clicks into place and you hear the click. Uh, another uh, issue that I see people run into from time to time when they're trying to put this riser in, there's this flap right here. I hope you can see it on camera, but this flap right here uh, can be a pain in the butt because you don't really see it. It's, it's kind of to the, to the side right here. If you're trying to put um, the riser in without closing this flap, uh, then you can run into some issues. So uh, we're going to go ahead and line this up properly here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and close her up. Uh, I like to have the tabs up when I do it so that when I do shut them down, it goes down perfectly. Okay. Um, and just like that, uh, you can easily uh, load up a riser and just go one by one by one. Um, I mean, it's really, it'll take some time, um, but it's definitely worth it. It's one of those things that we recommend if you are uh, running this machine right now and you need a good band-aid to extend the life of your server for another couple of years, really dropping in four terabytes of RAM is, uh, I mean, it's huge for this machine. It just boosts the uh, performance so much. So uh, now we'll go ahead and show you how to actually put the expansion riser back in. Now putting the expansion card back in really isn't too hard. I mean, it's pretty heavy. Um, but really just going to line it up. Sometimes you do have to be a little bit more forceful than you'd like because it does kind of get stuck just because there's so much weight here. So like right now it's not fully wanting to go in. So you have to shove it a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now. Not too hard, but a little. There you go. And you see it goes in. Uh, never want to push too hard, but just enough to make sure it fully goes in. And right there, i got to be careful. Those tabs can't pop up, but it's happened before. Just need to make sure everything's flush. And boom, you're in. Okay, and then just close this back up and you'll see this blue tab is going to click right here and you're done. So really it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do. I'll say there's, um, it, it can be a little tough uh, at times, but really if, uh, if you watch this video, I, I mean it's, it's not that bad and it's something that uh, if, if you're interested in doing, uh, our team could help you um, walk you through it. And, and make sure that it's an easy, seamless process for you. So, and on that note, if you are looking to get some upgrades for your uh, DL 980G7 and you need some 16 gigs or 32 gigs, uh, we actually just got in a bunch of uh, 32 gigs, about 2,000 pieces of some EC2 registered. Uh, would love to be able to help you out if you need to put in four TBs into the system. So please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, smash that subscribe.